Welcome to part 2 of this Exilia Region series on effective communication. Friends, it is important to learn and understand body vernacular or what is also referred to as non-verbal expressions. Body language is the way the human body reinforces the state of one's mind. It is possible to read body language which resonates the mind. We need to be skilled at it in order to determine the messages that we or others give out. This is different from sign language which is the application of body language to convey a speaker's message. It entails a combination of hand shapes and movement of the arms and body including facial expressions to convey a speaker's thoughts. It is a language used to communicate with people who are physically impaired from hearing or speaking. Do you know that there are over 300 sign languages? Very intriguing indeed. We've got to be careful about interpreting people's attitude through body language because some people are introverts while others are extroverts. Therefore, their respective body languages will differ. While an introvert may be perceived as a snob, an extrovert may also be seen as someone who is wayward. There are people who basically avoid eye contact due to timidity or shyness. The human mind controls the body. Certain body activities can reveal the state of someone's mind. Ever wondered why some people fiddle with their noses during conversations? When a person folds his or her arms during a conversation, is that really a sign of boredom like some people have are? Many people are poor readers of body language but they erroneously think that they are exceptionally good at it. Telling lies is also an uncanny but very common phenomenon during communication. How can you detect when someone is telling lies through body language? That is a tricky part of communication because what one considers a lie may actually be born out of misinformation or ignorance. It is very difficult to decipher when someone is telling lies through his or her body language. However, there are ways to improve one's observation skills by becoming a master of non-verbal communication such as body movement, gaze, facial expressions, eye contact, and hand or leg gestures. Researchers have proven that people who tell lies smile less as they exert a lot of facial energy to authenticate their lies, which a smile may ruin. But some hardcore liars would look at you eyeball to eyeball until you go dizzy. However, more often than not, when people tell lies, they find it very difficult to look straight at the eyes of people they lie to because the exact pressure on the laboratory of their minds where they contaminate the truth. And remember, the human body reflects the inner workings of the mind. Some liars become experts at subduing their body from leakages. We must be very cautious whenever we notice that someone is fidgeting during a conversation as this is another indication that they may not be telling the truth. You know, it is possible to be fluent in body language. You can develop the art of reading body language so that you can effectively control and have the right results during communication. We are all endowed with an inner alarm system called intuition. Learn to observe people carefully and exercise the power of your perception. You can be a master at interpreting people's minds through their body language. Now let us examine the power of persuasive skills. The art of getting people to do whatever you want and whenever you want it is not magic but a skill that can be mastered. It is called the power of persuasion. It is one key that opens wide the doors of success. It is a key that all super achievers apply to achieve great successes. The ability to get people to buy your ideas or to agree with you on any matter is an incredible skill indeed. Persuasion is the art of getting people to suspend their skepticism. Campaigning before elections is a season when potential candidates apply various strategies to get people to buy into their ideas and eventually to vote for them. Businesses get patronages as a result of the power of persuasion. Every day, we encounter people at work or at home 
who we need to convince one way or another so they can agree with our ideas. Effective persuasive skills gives one an incredible advantage on various fronts. The power of persuasion is the process of influencing people's opinion. It is a tool that makes life more meaningful. The need to effectively convince people to understand and buy into your ideas is very vital. This is enhanced by one's ability to decode body language appropriately. You see, the power of persuasion can be positively or negatively applied. Those who join criminal gangs are captives of negative persuasion. We shall analyze the advantages of positive persuasive skills. But you must take note that the ability to persuade effectively does not guarantee a 100% success. It only enhances your chances of success. One key factor that separates super achievers from others is the impact of persuasive skills. When you develop persuasive skills, you would reap the benefits in several aspects of your life. Your chances of being successful in different areas of life are enhanced by your persuasive skills. Persuasion is the ability to get people to do things they may never consider doing. No one gets married without the element of persuasion. No one gets a job without the catalyst of persuasion. The ability to persuade is not necessarily predicated upon one's eloquence, but upon the capacity to influence people. The factors that enhance persuasion include character, integrity, and lucidity. For me to be effectively persuaded, the character of an individual or people who attempt to persuade me must be one of integrity, credibility, and rationality. Applying the right words can promote persuasiveness, which entails the ability to stir people's emotions. For effectiveness, persuasion may require referrals, quotes, analogies, and so on. The manner in which you present your ideas or views is absolutely very important. The process of enhancing communication skills in order to win people over requires empathy and sincerity. For persuasion to be effective, you must also learn to understand people's attitude and personality peculiarities. Politicians, business entrepreneurs, students, children, and parents all need persuasive skills. Persuasion is different from manipulation. But unfortunately, many people deprive their minds of good nutrition. They fail to exercise the muscles of their thinking faculties. They focus more on the acquisition of money and material possessions through any means possible. We must strive to consistently develop our minds. Let us feed our minds daily just like we feed our physical bodies. Listening is a very important part of effective persuasion. It is very frustrating to communicate with people who hardly listen. Such people rarely effectively persuade anyone because their attitude is often irritating. So if you desire to be a good persuader, you must also desire to be a good listener. Listening is not merely keeping quiet when someone is talking. Listening is the ability to understand what is being said, even if you have a different opinion. A good listener is an unbiased person who can grasp vital information that will enhance persuasion. Divorce courts would have fewer cases if couples were good listeners. The ability to be a good listener enhances all types of relationships, formal or informal. It also boosts one's effort and goals. A good listener can deduce a speaker's mindset, but a poor listener can lose favor and relationships. So, are you a good listener? Friends, listening to someone does not invariably translate to hearing. One may hear what someone else is saying, but may not really be listening. The art of listening attentively is a learnable interpersonal skill that can be mastered. Have you ever heard anyone complain? That someone listens too much, that certainly is inconceivable. You often hear people, particularly in affectionate relationships, say that someone hardly listens, 
but barely will you hear anyone complain that someone listens too much. People are more persuaded by good listeners than by poor listeners. Most poor listeners are motivated by their ego and sometimes self-seeking and impatient attitudes. Talking but not listening is not good communication at all. Some people attend seminars and symposiums but are hardly able to concentrate or listen in spite of the fact that they hear the presentations audibly. Many times their minds get so busy and distracted by many thoughts which can impede anyone's ability to listen well during conversations or presentations. For persuasion to be effective, please avoid interrupting the speaker or interjecting during conversations no matter the urge. By interrupting a speaker, one can inadvertently freeze or derail such a speaker's thinking process which is certainly not healthy for communication. One key to effective persuasion is to strive to get the attention of whoever you wish to persuade because most people have a very short concentration span. Apply strategies that could help to raise the interest of anyone or people that you wish to persuade. Have you ever watched a movie that is full of intrigues, conspiracies and plots in movies? are deliberate strategies by actors and producers of movies aimed at keeping their audience attention very high because when a movie is boring, attention inevitably wanes. Also, learn to master ways to manage distractions when people that you wish to persuade get distracted. What do you do when you attempt to persuade someone but such a person gets distracted? You may have to ask for another appointment or agree to reschedule such meetings. There can be no persuasion without attention. So, be sensitive to decipher when someone's attention is waning. When presenting your proposals or ideas, don't waste time or energy attempting to persuade someone whose attention is lost. Always strive to get the full attention of the person or people that you desire to persuade. Interruptions during a conversation can be a constraint to effective persuasion which may turn out to be very unproductive. It is important to avow that lots of people absorb or grasp less than 50% of what they hear. Therefore, any form of distraction or lack of attention thereof can be detrimental to your ability to persuade. It can even make you lose focus. So, summarizing your salient points during a conversation can enhance your ability to persuade someone or people. It enhances your presentation or shows a well-planned structure. Fix your attention on the person or people that you wish to persuade. The right body language can increase your ability to persuade. There are techniques to read what people have in their minds by decoding their body language. One incredible technique that can enhance your persuasive skill is the upgrade of your mental faculties. Avoid being embarrassed by failed or poor memory whenever you attempt to sell your ideas, products or services to someone or people. Confront that barrier called fear as it attracts failure on various fronts. Whenever you are afraid or nervous, you are likely to forget what you had planned to say before someone or people that you desire to persuade. So it is very important to develop your mental faculties. And one way to achieve this is through reading and meditation. And very importantly, learn to write things down. A Chinese proverb says, The faintest ink is more powerful than the strongest memory. End of quotes. Still on the importance of writing vital information down, people have opportunities to persuade effectively, but because they do not write important issues down, they forget vital information and appointments which sometimes culminate in loss of opportunities. Not a few people have very poor memory. When you improve your memory skills, you unavoidably improve your power to persuade. Many people do not know their telephone or vehicle license plate numbers off by heart. Do you know your international passport number, your national identification or your social security number off by heart? 
that's a good way to exercise your memory. At the least, try to know one or two of such important numbers of hearts. We all need to regularly exercise the muscles of our minds, challenge or test your memory. Are you good with names? Or are you one of those who are never good at recollecting names? Do you know that you can upgrade your minds just by striving to remember names and numbers? There are times that we meet people who we recognize, but yet we fail to recall their names. Have you ever had such an experience? Friends, are you in any form of relationship right now? The bedrock of relationships is persuasion. Endeavor to be observant or attentive during conversations. Sometimes you get people's attention or win their responsiveness when you call them by their names. For instance, whenever you go to a restaurant, make it a point of duty to find out the name of the waiter or waitress attending to you. Some of them carry name tags. Persuasion is a skill to influence. Go into a mental gym regularly for mental workout sessions. That will help to keep the muscles of your mind in active and healthy conditions. But always remember this. Selfishness is a snare that suffocates persuasion. Strive to be objective and sincere if you desire to persuade effectively. Integrity and character are keys that opens the gate for effective persuasion, whilst trust is the bedrock of persuasion. People lose opportunities to nurture very good relationships because of their poor character. Make uprightness your lifestyle. Walk tenaciously to be renowned for keeping your words. Whenever you encounter difficulties that threaten your reputation, try to communicate your challenges to the people involved. It is not what really happens to you that matters in life, but how you respond and effectively manage the circumstances that you encounter. Imbibe the habit of writing things down, such as your appointments and important schedules. We all need to upgrade the memory cards of our minds so that we can remember things that would enhance our ability to persuade. Forgetfulness could portray one as incompetence. Also, try not to burn bridges in your relationships with others. Endeavor to always honor your words or promises. It is such a great thing to do what is right. One fundamental aspect of effective communication is words. There can be no effective persuasion without words, either written, spoken words, sign language words, or sign words. Words are very powerful as they can make or break, they can create or destroy. So, use them to your advantage. Choose your words carefully. The right words can make you happy or sad, inspired or depressed. Words can influence one's decisions or actions. For instance, do you know what it entails for someone to gleefully take his or her own life? Suicide bombers become messengers of death through the persuasive power of words. When words are plastered with the truth or glazed with lies, they have the potential to persuade. But we must realize that no matter how long the truth is suppressed, it will stubbornly bounce back someday because truth is extremely resilient. Persuasion is a vital key to success. Airlines, hotels, restaurants, boutiques, hospitals, and other businesses persuade us to patronize their services. Success is the triumph of persuasion, and words play a vital part in that journey of life. Wrong words or the lack of persuasion has led to countless battles, divorce cases, quarrels, or rancor. Every human being requires a tool of persuasion to succeed. You can be a master at phrasing the right words, be it verbal, written, or sign. Discard shorthand phrases if you truly desire to be an effective persuader. There are appropriate words for different circumstances of life. Avoid words or gestures that may be characterized as hostile. Shun negative outlook and refrain from using hostile expressions that put people on the defensive or offensive if you desire to persuade effectively. 
weave your phrases carefully with gracious words. Friends, one other effective tool that enhances persuasion and communication is telecommunication. Many people are ignorant about how to effectively utilize this channel. Not a few people have poor telecommunication comportments. It is very important for people to choose the right time for telephone conversations. For instance, it is certainly improper to call a potential client at 6 a.m. on a Sunday morning or very late at night to discuss a proposal. How do you call someone very early or very late at night and all you have to say is, I just called to hear your voice? Learn to respect people's time and privacy. And when you make that call, always ask the receiver if it is convenient to talk or if he or she can spare some minutes for a conversation. Furthermore, it is important to state that people do not always have their telephones with them 24-7 all year round. Someone may be having a bath, driving, feeling ill, boarding a flight, going through security checks at a boarding gate, in a meeting, in a restroom and so on. Always learn to go straight to the point and to skillfully summarize your conversations if you desire to succeed at persuading someone or people. There are etiquettes for telephone discussions which many people brazenly abuse. For folks in the corporate world, the combination of telephone discourses and email correspondences have become very viable options for effective communication and persuasion. Some people prefer to send text messages and emails as opposed to making telephone calls, while others prefer to make phone calls in lieu of sending text messages and emails. Since the advent of the telephone, internet services and social media services, face-to-face -face meetings are not as common as they used to be. You can effectively persuade someone through any social media platform without a one-on-one -on -one encounter. For instance, why expend fuel needlessly and fritter away hours of valuable time in traffic congestions when you can achieve great results via emails, telephone calls, or even through virtual meetings. Indeed, many are oblivious of the truism that they lack telephone etiquettes as they often sound very rude, impatient, and bad-mannered while making telephone calls. It would be impossible to read the body language of a person on the other end of a telephone call, but his or her tone can indeed be very revealing. How can you effectively persuade someone who is very rude and offensive through a telephone chat? In such a delicate situation, you would need to use your voice and the right words to get what you want through effective persuasion. One secret to achieving effective persuasion is the art of being very polite and straight to the point. So, avoid beating around the bush during such telephone conversations. Over a telephone call, the way you sound to someone who is not seeing your facial expressions is very crucial. Sometimes, when some folks wish you good morning, you would wonder if all is truly well because of their seemingly hostile or skating tone. In communication, there's an expression called, put a smile in your voice, end of quotes. That really works wonders, you know? So why not try that right now? Imagine you're talking to a client in another city and you are trying to infuse a smile into your voice to express pleasantries and enthusiasm. Telephone conversations are all about voice, voice, and voice. More often than not, we make calls to people we do not really know, or in an attempt to get them to buy our ideas. How best would you want to sell yourself, your products or ideas? You've got to plan your strategies very well. What you say, how, and when you say it is key to effective or ineffective persuasion. Unfortunately, some people are naturally awful and inconsiderate. Do not allow such people to spoil your day or to frustrate your goals. Strive to be pleasant 
even with your voice, be courteous and pleasant during telephone conversations. As you may very well know, there are so many ill-mannered people all over the world. So you have got to be cautious in your communication with people. Always strive to be civil and polite. That would lead you through the gate of effective persuasion. Ask yourself as often as possible, what message am I conveying to the person or people on the other end of the phone call? It is important to be mindful of the fact that you may be interrupting someone anytime you make a phone call. Always be sensitive about the timing before you make that phone call. If you call the chief executive officer of a company very early on a weekend or during a holiday while he or she is in bed, that could ruin your opportunity for effective persuasion. There is an adage that says, opportunity lost may never be regained. It is always very difficult for people to change their minds when they form an opinion about others. When you sense that someone is busy, offer to call or to get back at a more convenient time. Sometime in the year 2014, I went to a hotel to see a client at a time we had both agreed upon. I had to wait in the hotel lobby for about 45 minutes and then I sent a reminder text message to him. He immediately invited me to his room but when I got there, he was deeply engrossed in a very sensitive telephone conversation. Although he offered me a seat, when I realized that he was very busy on the phone, I offered to go back to the hotel lobby downstairs to allow him some privacy for his business conversations. After about 40 minutes, he joined me at the hotel lobby and we had a rewarding chat. Point to note. We should be sensitive to ensure that we avoid distractions and garner the full attention of those whom we wish to persuade with our ideas. You see, your proposals may indeed have some merit, but if presented at the wrong time, it could hit a brick wall. Always ask someone you make a phone call to if it is a convenient time for a telephone conversation. It is easier for someone to turn down a proposition by telephone than during a face-to-face -face meeting. So always do your homework very well before making that phone call. Adequate preparations for a meeting will give you confidence during your presentations or conversation. Watch your attitude and try to sell your ideas very well. Have a game plan and be ready to make concessions. Let people know that you respect and value their time. Offer people solutions or incentives. Place your ego on quarantine. Detain your self-esteem during a conversation that requires persuasion. Avoid narcissistic tendencies and open squabbles. Offer people things that will benefit them as well as your good selves. It is more rewarding to give than to receive. And if you really desire to be an effective persuader, then you must endeavor to treat people with respect. Show them what a good listener you are and be creative in your persuasive approach. Develop a win-win strategy if you really desire to influence decisions through effective persuasion. Try to always be fair in your propositions. Do not appear to be self-centered. Aspire to win the confidence of the person or people that you wish to persuade. Sometimes, a positive compromise may be expedient for you to achieve your goals. This implies accommodating other people's goals and plans. Very often, while trying to push your ideas and aspirations, you may need to reach a compromise by way of negotiations. It's like a war of conflict of interests. Determine how best to effectively balance things so that all parties can be winners. Always manage your emotions. Even if you are unhappy and angry, you should pragmatically and responsibly convey your feelings to the other party or parties thereof. Anger has ruined many lives and businesses. Be very careful about how you manage different personalities. Resist the urge to interrupt a speaker which is rude and could be counterproductive. Majority of people world over are poor persuaders. Sadly, this category of people are oblivious that effective persuasion is a skill that can be learned and mastered. 
a skill that can open the floodgate of success in every aspect of life. The lack of persuasive skills among married couples have led to the collapse of countless marriages. Many married couples are suffering in their marriages. They endure misery due to their inability to develop persuasive skills. There can be no room for effective persuasion in any marriage where deceit, double standards, indiscretion, and injustice thrive. It is not compulsory for everyone to get married. Many people rush into marriages thinking it is a bed of roses, but before long, they rush out of their marriages. Married couples can suffer needlessly and subject their children to grave emotional anguish when the children watch their parents live like cat and mouse. Life is simple if one applies the right keys, but humans make it very complicated for themselves. If you desire to persuade effectively, be confident to ask for whatever you desire. If you ask, chances are that you will receive. The objective of persuasion must be to achieve a win-win situation, but you must be careful not to flutter people's ego in the course of persuasion. Friends, do you know that persuasion is synonymous to fishing? To fish, you would require a fishing pole or a fishing net with a bait. You would also need to appositely map out your scouting strategies. In business, you could use baits like rendering some complimentary services to your clients or provide complimentary products for your prospective clients to try out. That can hold the attention of your prospects and help to convince them to consider your ideas or offer. When you sow empathy and sincerity during communication, you will most likely reap effective persuasion. Be prepared to tolerate and manage people who are empowered with bad, difficult, cunning, rigid, toxic, confrontational, and negative attitude. People endowed with low self-esteem who exhibit chronic narcissism. You see, patient and objective dialogue is one way to manage difficult people, particularly hot-tempered, cynical, rude, sarcastic, impatient, narcissistic procrastinating people. Haven't you seen very prominent and influential personalities and representatives of the government of several nations argue vehemently to the extent of having physical brawls? That is undoubtedly the result of lack of effective persuasion. When you enhance your persuasive skills, it will diminish or even completely eliminate any prospect for violent clashes and battles. Good attitude is a vital key for effective persuasion. So do regular self-audit by asking yourself if people get inspired or irritated whenever you show up. Please remember to always study people's behavior through their body language. Strive to express your ideas logically. Apply empathy when necessary. Be careful to give out the right body signals and be bold to ask questions when it becomes expedient. Put yourself together and aspire for success in all that you do. Make concerted effort to understand various personality traits in order to avoid conflicts. Whether you are promoting yourself or some products or services, how you dress, smell, and your characteristic attitude communicate so much about your personality. The image that you present to people will determine the way they regard you. Be ready for surprises at any time and be prudent in your conversations with your spouse, your friends, your relatives, your colleagues, and others. Respect people's time. Endeavor to be audible and forthright. Talking over someone is very inappropriate and can be very annoying. If you are guilty of this, stop that forthwith. You cannot persuade effectively by talking over someone. To avoid being a victim of such misconduct, you have got to develop a resistant attitude to such nauseating behavior. And here's one vital factor that enhances effective persuasion. Never resort to flattery 
as a tool to curry favor in order to win the confidence of someone that you wish to persuade. Sincere compliments can enhance persuasion, but surely not flattery, which is often detrimental. Flattery may portray you as an insincere psychophant because it breeds distrust. It is good to be confident, but please try not to be overconfident in presenting your ideas or proposals. Even when you are unable to persuade someone or people, do not be discouraged. Be cautious and professional and appreciate such a person or people for their time as there could be more opportunities in the future. Be like a good sports person. Don't be a bad loser whenever you lose out on an opportunity. Maximize time rightly and try never to overstay your welcome at any point in time. As long as you do not easily give up trying, success may appear sooner than later. Persuasion is a skill that everyone must master in order to live a happy, successful life. Poor persuasive skills can lead to poor quality of life, but effective persuasive skills can inexorably open the doors of success for anyone. Therefore, make concerted effort to enhance your communication faculty as it enriches relationships and collaborations. It also develops commitments, improves productivity and creativity, and encumbers conflict in various aspects of human endeavor.